Okay, so we're now here with uh, integration by parts and una one ang sinabi dito, no? Um, if none of the previously mentioned procedures can be used to solve for an integral, one approach is to use uh, integration by parts. So, um, in short, kailangan test nyo muna yung dalawa kung pwede. Kung pwedeng impartial fraction decomposition or pwede rin natin itrigo sub. Kasi if that's not the case, then um, may maybe we will be doing integration by parts. But then again, it's not always the uh, best method. To, uh, I mean, syempre, pag di nyo kaya, alam ka namang ipilit nyo, di ba? So, dito, if u and v, so ito yung dalawa nating functions, no? We have u and v functions. So, u and v, kapag sila is something like multiplied with each other, so, you can express that in terms of u dv. Wag na to, no? Ito na lang. u dv is equal to uv minus v du. So, ganito yung laging tatanda na. u dv is equal to uv minus integral of u v du. So, yun lang yan. Para lang ano yan, para lang siyang yung galing dun sa ating total differential kung tatatandaan nyo, no? So, ito, uh, uh, sabihin natin ulit siya. Basahin ko lang to portion na to The expression translates to the fact that the integral of a product of two functions is simply the first function times the integral of the second function minus the integral of the derivative of the first function times the integral of the second. So, di naman siguro mahirap yung intindihin. No? Now, ito yung mga certain rules na we have to remember bago tayo mag-proceed dun sa ating um, integration by parts. So, medyo marami-rami siya. Okay, but then again, uh, let's try to discuss. Meron tayong up to G. Ilan ba yun? 8. Okay, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 7 lang pala. Okay, so itong rules na to, ito yung kung paano mahanap natin yung ating uh, first function, that is yung U natin. Kasi importante natin malaman yung first and second functions. That is yung U natin, tsaka yung DV. Kasi diba, if you look at this U, DV, kailangan mahanap yung U at tsaka yung DV. So, for letter A, sabi dito, if the integrand contains both functions integrable, take the function as the first, which can be finished by repeated um, differentiation, and the other as the second. So, ito, integration by parts, ito talaga is nag-employ ng difcal. Marami talaga itong uh, application ng difcal. So, um, yung example natin is x squared sine x dx. Now, ano yung u function? That is the first function. So, pipiliin mo ngayon is yung x squared. That is your u function. Why is that? So, kasi yung x squared, pag dinifferentiate mo siya ng dinifferentiate, mauubos siya. What does it mean? Diba pag tinake mo yung first derivative ng x squared, you will be having 2x. Okay? And then the second derivative will give you 2. And then the third derivative will give you 0. That means naubos yung x squared after some n differentiation. What if uh, we we check on sine x dx? So if it's sine x or just sine x, no? Sine x, kapag dinifferentiate mo siya maging cosine x, yung cosine magiging negative sine x. Negative sine x magiging negative cosine x. So, hindi siya natatapos kasi nag, uh, paulit-ulit lang siya dun sa sine and cosine. So with this, kapag ganyan yung form, you select uh, the first function as the function that is um, nauubos or that can be f um, ano ba tawag dun? That can be that becomes zero after some n differentiation. So that's the first rule. Now the second one, if the integrand contains one an integrable, that is kapag yan nga, inverse circular function, logarithmic. So ito yung mga hindi natin basta-basta na integrate, ba? We, we take the an integrable as the first function and the other as second. So based on rule one, sabi natin, ba? Kapag meron tayong function na nauubos, we take that. Pero sabi kasi dito, kap sabi na over, ano siya, na parang na supersede siya. Kasi kapag kasi meron tayong unintegrable na portion, that is a logarithm of x, di ba? Hindi natin siya kayong integrate directly kasi wala naman tayong, ano dyan eh, direct integral. So, from that, um, we will be selecting that uh, as our u function. Kasi yung ating x squared, pwede pa rin kasi natin siyang i-integrate. So, yun yung reason dan reason dyan. Kasi... If you try to, ito pagka na, ano, na expression na yung integration by parts, so ma-realize na, ako nga, mali nga yung aking u substitution. Kasi, I mean, yung u, aking u function. Kasi pag ginawa nyo yung x squared, and then may logarithm of x squared, hindi kayo matatahapos dyan, kasi laging may matitira. And the fact na hindi kayang i-integrate yung logarithm of x, so, um, babalik at babalik lang kayo dun sa portion na, hindi to kayang integrate. So, I'll try to uh, do a different approach in this case. That's why when you have that kind of ano, function, you, you always select that as your U function. So, that's for letter B.
Now about for C. If the integrand contains only one unintegrable function, then take the given function as the first function and unity as the second. In short, kapag meron kayong gantong function, you just have to take yung ating... Let's say for example, the integral... Ay, hindi nyo pala kaita. Halimbawa, meron kayong the integral of ln of x and then dx. So, di ba sabi dito, this function has only one unintegrable function that is ln of x, di ba? And then dx na yung kasama. So, what you have to do is just to select this as your u and then yung dv mo would be your dx na dyan. At sulat ko. So, that is your dv. So, yun lang yun. Simpleng, simpleng, simpleng rule. Pag isa lang siya, then yun na yung u mo. Okay. So, again, kung bet ako may mga UDV dito kasi yun yung ating goal lagi muna sa ating integration by parts. Hanapin natin yung U at saka DV. So, the next one is that if the integrand contains both the functions integrable and none can be finished by repeated differentiation, then take any one as the first function and the other second. Repeat the rule of integration by parts. What does it mean? For example, the integral is cosine of x and then let's have the in, uh, sine h of x. So, diba this, uh, even if you pick u as cosine or yung u natin is sine h of x, uh, hyperbolic sine of x. Kahit pa ulit tayo mag-integrate dyan, wala, wala tayong matatapos dyan kasi yung cosine and then sine are periodic functions. So, pa ulit ulit lang sila. So, with this, sabi dito, uh, you can just pick any of the ano any function as u and dv and then um after that meron tayong certain rule na apply which is yung parang mag stop tayo at a certain point and then pag nag-stop tayo doon mag-add tayo ng mga uh, so, something like mag-add tayo ng mga um mismong integral expression so later on uh, I'll show you how to do how to deal with that kind of problem but then again, ito yung one of the most important rules that we have. This rule is um, established to help you understand um, or easily pick yung ating u. And then just remember, I late, parang ako late, I late. So that means na if you have um, a series of, ano, mga, not a series, but yung product ng functions na yun, inverse trigonometric logarithmic algebraic so ito na basically yung anim natin ng mga elementary functions and then kung combinations lang nun and then uh, nahirapan kang pumili kung ano ba yung ilalet yun natin dun so this is the priority no? kapag meron tayong inverse uh, and together with your um, algebraic functions then your u would be the inverse trigonometric function for example the integral of let's say the inverse tangent of x and then x squared so this is your um uh, this is the thing that i need to integrate diba? so the body is tangent tangent inverse of x that's inverse and then this one is algebraic so based on i late i comes first so therefore your u would be this tangent inverse of x and then this x squared dx would be your dv Okay, so ganun lang siya kasimple. Again, if we have, let's say, the ln of x and then inverse, I mean, yeah, hyperbolic sine of x dx, which is, so, which is your u and which is your um, dv. Based on this expression, yung logarithmic, so, will come uh, first than the, nasan ba yun? Exponential function. So, for this case, we have, um, this is your u and this is your dv. Okay, so ganun lang siya kasi yung ating exponential is also applicable for hyperbolic functions. Now, what happens when you have this um, ln of x and then meron ka naman na inverse sine of x? Kasi diba sabi dito parang pantay sila. Now, uh, what you have to do here is to simplify muna kasi baka pwede naman siyang simplify. So, if that's okay, then um, simplify mo muna if ever. Pero um, if, you're, if you're not uh, really that um, well versed in simplifying just do trial and error kung alin yung mas pwede pero uh, as for me I think this would be your U and this would be your um, DV kasi um, ln of x can still be um, uh, you can still find the antiderivative of this even though it's not really that I mean you, even if you still have to do integration by parts pero these cases kasi is kind of complicated hindi naman to lagi lumalabas but then again um, just case lumabas to diba okay so ganun lang naman yung ating eyelid and then for f ah hanggang f nga pala talaga siya hanggang g pa pala 
So for F, we have the reduction formula. So kung meron naman tayong ganito, ito yung kailangan yung i-look out, no? Kung meron kayong sin x, actually na na experience na experience na banggit to before ng isang student nung nag-consultation tayo, parang pinapa-differentiate niya. Ay, pinapa pinapa-integrate. So yun, ito na yung sagot dun sa tanong mo. We use reduction formula for this. So sin to the 6x or you use you use your 1 half, 'di ba? Parang ganito yung before, 1 half minus 1 half and then cosine 2x parang ganyan ata yun, di ba? Then u squared. Tama ba yun? Yung identity ko. I think tama naman to, no? So, di ba? Ganito yung identity niya, niya before. So, kung gagawin mo yan, you have to raise this to the cube para ma-evaluate mo to. But then again, uh, you can use your reduction formula for this. Basta ganito yung form. Sundan nyo lang to. Yung n is the exponent and then n minus 1, x cosine and then uh, that's it for your antiderivative. Shortcut to, itong reduction formula. Now, uh, yun sinabi ko dito na uh, ito kasi is ano lang, konting reduction formula to. Meron pa yan madami. Pero hindi ko na siya sinulat lahat kasi hindi naman natin yan matatalakay lahat talaga nung sorry, ko. Hindi naman natin matatalakay lahat ng reduction formula dito kasi hindi naman kasi sa totoo lang, sinusunod lang naman natin yung pattern sa reduction formula. So, um, basic lang naman yan. Basta sundin nyo lang yung formula dito. So, kailangan nyo ba sa uluhin tong formula na to? Mm, yes. But then again, kung nag-exam naman kayo, di ba? Usually, mag-open naman kayo ng notes. So, okay lang kahit hindi nyo sa uluhin masyado. May notes naman kayo eh. May module naman. Ito. Ito yung sinasabi ko. So, what if, ano, yung kanina, di ba? What if both functions cannot, ano, cannot be reduced to zero after some n differentiation. So, dito tayo gagamit. Nung tayo natin na tabular method or DI method. This is one of the, um, ano, best uh, method when you try to differ and I mean, take the antiderivative of more complicated functions. So, case A natin would be, if u in the first function and dv is the second, where dn or dn u or the higher order derivative becomes zero. So, ito yung parang ano, parang ito yung rule number one natin, tinabular method lang siya. Okay? So, pag nag-zero yun, then this is your integral. Second one, kapag naman yung ating repeating is both repeating for u and v. So, once na magkaroon kayo ng certain expression dito na naging um, same, so you stop. Example natin is, though mamaya, mas makikita nyo yung parang mas concrete example. Pero let's just have this, ano. Let's say uh, we have, yun nga, yung cosine x and then inverse sine of, I mean, the hyperbolic sine of x. So, diba, the first derivative uh, of this cosine of x would be sine x or negative sine x. Then, uh, ano ba yung sunod? We have negative cosine of x, derivative and then positive sine x, um, cosine of x. So, apat na lang muna, no? How about yung sine h of x? So, the derivative would be cosine parabolic of x. Tapos, alam naman natin na, diba, uh, the reciprocal function will only be those na mag produce ng negative. So, for this, lagi lang siyang halinhinan for positive values. So, sabi dito, you stop. Sabi dito, no? If u is the first function and dv is the second, apply the, the same procedure above and stop when a row matches any of the previous row. Usually, the original or the first row. So, yung original kasi natin is cosine of x and then sine h of x. So, you stop when there is the same, ano, or there has the same pair na na-obtain na natin. So, cosine of x. So, uh, this one is cosine of x and this one is sine x. So, pwede ka na mag-stop dito. Though, uh, magkaiba sila ng sine, pero you can just use this. Pwede yun. Or, kung hindi siya applicable, pwede naman na mag-move ka further. Pwede ito rin, no? Uh, this can be the two options that you have. Pero, makikita, na naman, makikita mo naman yun na minsan hindi siya pwede or minsan pwede siya. Pag nag-zero yung ating magiging addition, Pag nina dati, then naging zero. So, hindi yun pwede. Pero, if it's not zero, then uh, you can pick that uh, pair. Basta kung mag-zero siya, then you you move to the next pair. So, ganun lang naman siya kasimple. But later on, makikita nyo kung paano siya kinagawa. And then, finally, is this... Ah, wala na. Okay, so, yun lang pala. Dalawa lang nga siya. Okay, so, ganun lang yung quick discussion. Mas maintindihan siya pag nag-solve tayo. So, let's head to the problem solving. Okay, so let's start our integration by parts, no? Dun sa ating 
um, module. Pero kasi nakalagay sa module is solve uh, the following items using any methods applicable. So, I'll just pick out yung mga pwedeng gamitan natin ng integration by parts. And kung hindi naman, hindi natin sa solve. And I'll just be doing the odd numbers then ulit dito. Then, gawin nyo yung, ano, yung the rest of this. Kasi may answer naman. Okay. So, let's start with number 1. Oops. And then, uh, remember, I'll be using yung integration by parts sa lahat ng solution. So, for number 1, we have the integral of x squared e raised to negative 3x dx. Okay. So, sabi natin sa rule 1, yung ating u function would be those that can be um, differentiated repeatedly and then magiging 0. Or, we can do your i late. And from this, based dun sa i late natin, alam natin na yung algebraic expression will come first before the exponential function. So, therefore, our priority would be the um, algebraic expression. So, therefore, your u is equal to x squared and then your dv is equal to e raised to negative 3x dx. Now, remember, kasama lagi sa inyong pagsusulat yung dx ha, sa dv. So, um, lagi yung kasama yun. Now, sabi natin, the general formula, let's use another color. Sabi natin, yung general formula for finding the antiderivative would be that if you have an expression u dv, which is this expression, that is... Um, equivalent to uv minus the integral of v du. Okay? So, from this, we need to find the derivative of your u, which is actually equal to 2x dx. And then, of course, kailangan natin hanapin yung antiderivative of this expression, which is um, v in this case. And ano ba yung antiderivative niyan? So, remember, that becomes negative um, 1 third e raised to 3x kasi um, wala nga ng plus siya. Kasi uh, alam naman natin na yung derivative nito would result to chain rule times negative 3. That's why meron tayong inverse operation that is negative 1 third. Okay, and then writing this, so we have the integral of x squared e raised to negative 3x dx is actually equal to uv. So you multiply just yung, at, you just multiply yung uv natin. So that is negative um, 1 third e raised to negative 3x times x squared. So ganyan siya, uv, and then minus the integral of v du. So, parang uh, pa-diagonal siya, uv, and then um, pataas siya, v du. So, that is um, negative 1 third e raised to negative 3x and then times 2x dx. Okay? So, in short, this becomes negative 1 third e raised to negative 3x x squared and then plus the integral of 1 third e raised to negative 3x or plus 2 and then meron itong x dx. Okay? So, kung mapansin nyo, yung ating expression is not yet done kasi meron pa tayong integrate dito. And, and the body's expression would also employ integration by parts. So, yung nagkata yung una, una nating example is ano, meron agad siyang dalawang integration by parts sa isang equation. So, um, common naman yun na nangyayari. Now, sometimes, hindi enough yung isang integration by parts. You also have to perform another integration by parts or IBP within IBP. So, uh, wag kayong tataka kung nangyayari yung ganong case. Because that's so normal. So, for, from this expression, we do another integration by parts. And remember, yung ating pipili na u function again dito is the same. Uh, same concept. x then for u. Okay? And then yung dv natin would be uh, one third or pwede actually natin ilabas na yung 1 third para wala na tayong constant. So, you can have plus 2 thirds na lang dito. So, plus, uy, okay, ganito. Ah, plus 2 thirds, okay? Okay, so we have here, um, e raised to negative 3x dx. So, your du would be dx and then your uh, v would be equal to negative 1 third. Ganun ulit. E raised to negative 3x. Ayan lang. Okay. And then, um, rewriting this. So, we have uv ulit. So, that becomes x times our negative um, 1 third x. E raised to negative 3x. So, yun yun yung uv. And then, vdu. So, that is minus the integral of vdu. So, that becomes negative 1 third e raised to negative 3x dx. Okay. So, pwede natin siyang ilabas yung um, one third so that becomes plus one third the integral of e raised to negative three x dx. Now, itong last portion, pwede natin siyang i-integrate. So, that becomes one third x e raised to negative three x. Then, 
minus 1 over 9 kasi this one is negative 1 third. So that is minus 1 over 9 e raised to negative 3x plus c. I mean, yung plus c, sasama natin siya dito. Now, remember, this answer is obtained, I mean, this answer is obtained from this expression dun sa nauna. So what we have to do here is to remove this and then substitute yung ating antiderivative in that case. So that becomes uh, multiplied, okay? Multiplied by um, this expression. So that is negative one third x e raised to negative three x, and then minus one over nine e raised to negative three x. Okay. And then we can now um, simplify this further. So uh, let's have muna yung ating mga an expression. So we have negative x squared over three e raised to negative three x, and then I think we have, so, magiging two-thirds times negative one-third, that becomes negative. I think that's negative uh, two over nine. X e raised to negative three X, and then this becomes minus ulit. Minus uh, two over 27 e raised to negative three X plus C. Now, we can always factor out yung ating mga ano dito, uh, certain uh, factorable parts. <laughs> factorable parts. Kung so, i-factor out natin yung 20, 1 over 27, e raised to negative 3x. So, I guess we'll have something like this, no? So, we have negative 1 over, or positive. Gawin natin negative 1 over 27. We will be having, so ito magiging ano yan, um, times 9. So, that becomes, or, so from this, we can factor out yung 1 over 20, negative 1 over 27, e raised to negative 3x. So, that becomes negative 1 over 27 e raised to negative 3x and then this becomes um, 9 from 9x squared diba? kasi 1 third to and then minus so that is 3 so that becomes 6 diba? so that becomes 9x squared plus ano na lang dito plus uh, 6 6x and then this is plus 1 plus c okay so this is your final answer for this problem okay so, let's check kung same lang sila. Actually, same lang sila, pero iba yung finactor ko. Negative e is negative 3x ito. But then again, uh, if, you if you're trying to check each term, um, pares naman yung nakuha natin. 2 over 9x and then 2 over 27. So, um, it's just the same. Mas maganda lang yung form na nakuha natin ngayon dito. So, again, um, just a quick reminder. Pag mayroon tayong integration by parts, just find yung ating first function u and then your dv. As well as, um, remember, kapag hindi siya tapos, kasi meron pa tayong na huling portion na kailangan integrate. Kasi lagi yung may integrate ka pa itong portion na to. Yan. So, kailangan readily integrable na yan. So, kung hindi rin, at pwede rin naman siya apply ng integration by parts or other uh, methods of um, integration, then you have to proceed with that process as well. So, yun for number one. Now, let's continue. So, for this problem, we have the integral of the natural logarithm of the natural logarithm of x all over x dx. So, ito, bago natin solve it, let's uh, do some u substitution muna tayo. Na. So, let, we let u equal to ln of x. Kasi kung mapansin nyo, yung derivative ng ating ln of x is exactly this dx over x. So, uh, might as well gamitin natin para mas madali natin uh, masolve to. So, we have du is equal to 1 over x dx. And this is uh, that portion. So we have the integral of ln of, um, ln of, ah, sorry, mali, ganito. ln of, um, so that is ln of u, diba? ln of u, or we can just use yung parenthesis. So ln of u, and then that is du. So ganyan yung magiging form natin, diba? Napakasimple lang. And again, diba, sabi natin sa rule number, uh, I, th I think 3 or 4, sabi natin na when you have um, a function that is, ano, pwede natin siyang uh, differentiate and then the rest would just be the variable of integration. You just let this as your first function. So this becomes your u and then this is your dv. Now, um, since mag -re maging redundant tayo sa paggamit ng u and v, kasi u yung nagamit ko dito, let's, ano, gawin natin to y para hindi tayo maging, ano, pare-parehas ng ginagamit na term. So, we imagine siyang y and then this one becomes ln y and then dy. Para hindi tayo lang pare-parehas. No? Okay, so from this, we have u. 
So, itong, itong ginagawa natin, itong first part dito ha, again, this is use substitution, this is basic integration procedure, yun. Sunod ka mga gagawin is special techniques integration using integration by parts. So, yung first function is uh, u, that is ln of y, and then the derivative would be, of course, equal to 1 over y dy. Okay. And then, yung ating v would simply be dy, so therefore, the derivative, a bit na ata derivative of this v would be equal to um, y. Okay. Kasi ano lang yan, parang, ayun nga, kung 1, parang 1 dy, so y lang yung antiderivative. Now, let's uh, rewrite this in terms of uv minus the integral of v du. So, that becomes y ln of y, okay, minus the integral of v du, so that is y over y times dy. And this becomes y ln of y minus, we cancel this out, and then the antiderivative of dy would be equal to y. Okay, so, napaka-simple, ganun lang siya, and then plus c. Now, remember, we have to return this or uh, bring this back to its original form. So, that is, if we have y, that is ln of x. So, that becomes ln of x, okay, times ln of, ln of x, okay, and then minus ln of x, then plus c. Okay, so, ganun yung ating magiging final answer. Napakaraming ln, no? Now, pwede ba natin itong e-factor? Sige, uh, actually, pwede natin e-factor at yung ln of x, okay? So, from this, we have ln of, ln of x, diba? And then, minus 1. So, pwede itong gantong form. But anyway, kahit naman alin dyan, okay lang yan. So, kung titignan natin yung sagot natin, um, ang pinaka-final answer dito sa handout is yung first one. Okay? Pero you can always uh, no, factor uh, that out in pattern for the second one. So, okay lang naman kahit anong sagot. Basta, kung saan kayo comfortable, then yun yung sundin nyo. Okay? So, yun. Napakadali nitong number 3 natin. Pero, madali lang siya kasi nag-gets agad natin na pwede siyang mag-let uh, u substitution. I mean, yung parang y substitution natin na ginawa ngayon. Pero, kung isipin mo to na ano lang, as, in, as it is na wala kang u substitution, medyo mahirap to, no? Kasi, wala kang makikita agad na uh, ano, parang u and then dv in this case. Okay, so, nag-jump na ako sa number 7 kasi as I see it, yung number 5 is um, hindi naman integration by parts yung kailangan gawin dyan. So, I hope alam nyo na na kung method ang applicable dyan. So, that is um, trigonometric substitution. So, hindi ko naman ipipilit yung integration by parts for that kasi um, pro probably ba mas maging complicated pa yung mangyayari sa atin. So, wag na lang, no? So, I'll be jumping to number 7. Okay, and then I'll try siguro mag-sagot ng isa pa uh, para compensate yung isang number na yun. So, for number 7, we can see here, may meron tayong combination nating ln of x and then uh, this algebra expression. And again, sa i late natin, di ba? If you want to prioritize something here, yung logarithmic natin yung ating co-consider. So, we have u is equal to ln of x, okay? And then du would be equal to dx over x. Or 1 over x, dx. Now, for our dv, so ito yung medyo, ano, papakomplicate dito, no? But then again, um, if we have 2 plus x uh, squared, we can just take the antiderivative of this, uh, meaning, actually, this should be, ano pala, negative 2. Okay, so sulat ulit natin. We have uh, negative 2 dx, ba? So from this, yung ating v, so kung mapapansin nyo, uh, I'm just, writing this in terms of the negative exponent. So, diba? Negative 2 yan. And then, by uh, simply taking the antiderivative, we could say that that is 2 plus x raised to negative 1. Okay? So, but ganun kasi, pag ginawa mo siya sa negative 1, diba? Or, alagyan natin negative dito. So, negative times 2 plus x raised to negative 2 and then times 1. So, that um, becomes negative 2. Okay? So, ito na yung kanya antiderivative. Now, let's try... Um, Solving for this. Now, sabi natin uv, so that becomes something like um, negative ln of x over 2 plus x. So, ilalay ko na siya sa ilalim kasi um, there is a negative one naman to eh. And then, minus the integral of v du. So, that is uh, minus. So, that becomes plus kasi minus din to eh. That is uh, 2 plus x. I mean, nasa baba siya. So, that becomes uh, dx over um, x times 2 plus x. Okay? So, ito na lang yung last portion na kaya na natin i-integrate. Now, there are two ways we can deal with this. Ano? It's either we uh, distribute this and then try to complete the square and find the uh, fitting integrand. Or we can do partial fraction in this case. Now, uh, so the para kasing ano, para kasing tapos na tayo sa fitting integrand, though pwede natin siyang gawin. So, from this case kasi, I'll be doing ano, partial fraction decomposition naman para ma-refresh tayo lagi. No? 
So, di ba dito, this uh, expression will be equal to a over x and then plus b over 2 plus x. And then, we can just simply um, have this cross multiply. So, that is 2 plus x and then plus bx. That is equal to 1. Kasi, bakit 1? Kasi yung dx natin is just, um, I mean, kung ilalagay natin tong uh, dx dito sa may medyo labas. Ilagay natin dito times dx. And then, 1 to, di ba? So, with this, 1 lang yung ating numerator. So, solve natin, ituloy natin. No? So, we have 2a plus 2x, I mean, plus x, plus ax, and then plus bx. So, therefore, we could say na yung ating x is actually 0, but that is equal to a and b. So, a plus b. Okay? And then, for our constant, we have 2a that is simply equal to um, 1. Diba? So, therefore, a is equal to 1 half. And for this expression to be true, we need to have b as negative of a para maging 0 sila. So, therefore, we could say na from this expression, we have 1 half x, okay? I mean, 1 half over x and then negative 1 half. So, negative 1 half and then uh, 2 plus x. So, we can now integrate uh, this expression. So, therefore, the answer would be negative ln of x over 2 plus x and then the antiderivative of 1 half over x would be plus um, 1 half ln of x. So, yun lang naman yun. And then for this one, we have minus 1 half ln of um, 2 plus x plus c. Okay? So, that is our final answer for this problem. Now, um, you might be thinking na um, can we actually ano, ito, parang simplify pa. So, uh, pwede naman pero um, this form is uh, already um, okay na naman yan. So, pwede, na, pwede natin siyang i-rewrite lang na ano, na ano ba? Pwede ganito kung gusto nyo para mauna lang yung positive, no? Kasi minsan pangit pag nauna yung negative, eh. Pwede yan, o kaya pwede rin naman sabihin nyo, i-factor out natin yung 1 half, okay lang din yan. Okay? So, wala ang problema dyan, parehas lang din yan. Or there's another way na we can rewrite this. Pwede natin na uh, apply ng properties ng ln, so that becomes ln of x over 2 plus x. So, pwede rin yan. Okay? And then, minus ln of x over 2 plus x. So, these are the possible answers that you can give from this problem. So, yan ha. Medyo madami na yan. You can select anything, which is, whichever is most applicable to you and mas gusto nyo yung form. Pero ako, um, wala namang preference. Kahit alin dyan yun, tama naman yung lahat. Basta, uh, make sure na kung magsisimplify is on point talaga kayo magsimplify. Now, let's go back to the number 7 and let's check kung ano yung um, sagot natin dito, no? So, actually, ang ginawa dito, I think, is that pinagsama ko ata dito yung etong portion na to. Ah, nga. So, parang if inactor at yung ln of x, okay, and then pinagsama natin yung 1 half plus 1 over 2 plus x. Okay, so parang ganyan. And then, kaya, ayun, and then minus parang 1 half ln of 2 plus x. So, parang ganyan. So, try natin na gawin yun, no? dito na lang sa portion na to. So, from that expression, we have ln of x. Okay. And then, uh, adding this, so, alam naman natin na yung kanyang uh, magiging denominator would be 2 times 2 plus x with, uh, no, wa, uh, no, 2 plus x dito and then um, plus 2. Parang ganyan, ba? And then, we have minus 1 half ln of 2 plus x. Okay. And then, we have ln of x times we have here 4 plus x, I think, 4 plus x. Then, we divide this by, uh, so, I think this is, uh, oh, so, yan na lang, 2 times 2 plus x. Pwede naman na yan na yan. Okay? So, minus 1 half ln of 2 plus x. So, yan. And sabi dito, naging x na lang daw siya. So, paano ba yung nangyayari? Wait lang, ha? I'll try to... So, we have 1 half plus 1 over 2x. Ah, this should be pala minus. Kaya pala. That is minus. And then, uh, mababago to, no? So, from this expression, we have uh, 2 plus 2x. And then, um, we have 2 plus x. And then, uh, minus 2. Ayun. Makes sense. That's why, makakancel natin tong ano dito, yung 2 natin dito. Kaya matitira na lang is yung x. Okay. So, natira yung ating x. 
Tapos na nga natira pa. So anyway, yun, yun yun yung ano, uh, equivalent ito. So from this naman, we have ito. Pwede natin siya actually i-rewrite in terms of, ba diba? This is multiplied, eh, so parang maging x, L na x yan, over, hindi kita kasha. So dito na lang. So parang ang mangyayari dyan, magiging x, L na x, and then we have, uh, we divide this by, ano ba? So from this, we can factor yung ano, one half natin, kasi yun yung ginawa sa handout. So one half, and then we have x, L na x, okay? And then we divide this by 2 plus x, kasi na-factor out natin yung one half. And then minus, since pinactor natin one half, malita na lang is L of 2 plus x. Okay, so this is yung form sa handout na eksaktong eksakto. So ina na lang Sunod lang natin kung ganun nga siya. So, ganun naman nga siya. So, same lang naman yan kahit anong sagot nyo dyan. So, meron kayong four forms dyan kahit anong sagot nyo dyan ay will still be the same um, results. Okay. So, that's it for number 7. So, ayan. Change outfit na ulit tayo. No? And uh, for this problem, we have number 9. Okay. So, uh, add numbers yung ginagawa ko. No? And for this case, as you can see, uh, meron tayong um, combination of trigonometric function and algebraic functions. And the only way that we can deal with this is uh, through integration by parts. But before we deal with that, ano, alam naman natin na this portion ng trigonometric um, part cannot uh, be directly integrated in a way na um, we could use integration by parts. Kasi... Alam naman natin na we have to simplify this muna bago natin siya evaluate. So with this, let's uh, simplify this first. Now I'll be taking these two um, sines here, sine t and sine 2t, so that I can apply yung ating um, identity. Now let us recall that if we have sine a and then sine b, we will be having this identity, 1 half quantity cosine of a minus b and then minus cosine of a plus b. Okay? So, you can uh, check on your handout yung um, you can check your handout kung dun sa module natin, no? So, dun siya sa under the summary of basic integration techniques. So, you can go back to that and then recheck yung mga identities natin. So, I'll be using this to uh, simplify this term. So, that becomes uh, the integral of t and then that becomes one times one half. Okay? And wait, let me just so, magiging na lang itong 1 half and then t quantity cosine of that's a minus b so that is t minus 2t that becomes negative t and then minus cosine of uh, 3t. Okay? And then multiply this with sine 3t and then dt. Okay? And now since uh, this can be distributed with sine, I'll be using now the, uh, other, another identity which is sine a and then cosine of b. And for this, we have 1 half integral, I mean the integral, 1 half quantity as sine a minus b and then plus sine of a minus b. So, I believe it's also in your um, handout. Uh, yes, it is an um, under specifically nung first natin na, ano, na identity. So, it's under summary of basic integration techniques as well. So, going back to this, no. Oh, why do I have to use this identity? Kasi kailangan nating masiguro na isa lang term yung cosine and sine. So, with this, we have a 1 half. Ang gawin natin is distribute muna natin to, no? So, t and then this is multiplied with uh, sine and then cosine of t. So, pwedeng cosine t na lang kasi any um, cosine ng negative natin na variable would just be the same as having it as positive. And then minus cosine of, gawin natin, unahin natin yung sine para parallel tayo dito. So, sine 3t and then cosine. Though, actually, pwede naman na, eh, na kahit hindi na to natin sundin, kahit cosine mga na sine. Basta ganito lang yung maging form. Okay, so for the first term, we have 1 half, the integral of t. And now, this one can be um, replaced by 1 half and then quantity cosine, I mean sine sine of a minus b that is sine of 2t and then plus sine so that is um 
a uh, should be ano pala a plus b dito so that is a plus b so that is sine 4 t okay and then uh, we have now for this one hindi ko na siya gagalawin uh, kasi malalaman niyo later kung bakit it's either uh, you use u substitution para makuha antiderivative to or you can actually do this one Pwede naman na gawin natin, pwedeng hindi. Kasi ito, pwede na, ito siya is pwede natin siyang integrate na madali lang. So, pwede natin siya galawin. So, um, but then again, since nakamultiply pala siya dito sa t, so, kailangan pa rin natin siyang gawa ng, ano, more, I mean, simpler um, expression. So, with this, that becomes 1 half minus 1 half. And then, diba, for sine and cosine, we have dalawang sine. So, that becomes sine of um, 6t. Now, naging ganito siya kasi yung 3t minus 3t becomes 0 dun sa una nating term. So, that's why natira na lang yung second, which is actually positive um, plus sine a plus b. So, naging minus 1 half sine 6t na lang siya. Okay, and then dt. So, with this, mas madali na siya ngayon integrate. Kasi ang gagawin natin ngayon is, let's try to have this na uh, distributed yung uh, integral sign. So, that becomes 1 fourth and then t Okay, t sine 2t. Okay. Then the next one would be plus 1 fourth then. And then t sine 4t. And then finally, we have, I think that's, um, kasi diba ito 1 half, ito 1 half then. So, maging 1 fourth din siya na. So, minus. So, nasa na ba tayo? 1 fourth. The integral of t sine 60. Okay, so ito lahat is uh, my dt pa yan. Okay, and then uh, we can now integrate this, each of them, using integration by part. So yun lang naman yung ano, nagpapakomplicate dito sa atin lagi. Kasi uh, kailangan natin silang apply and lagi ng integration by parts. Then again, uh, the solution is just uh, this, no? Um, wala na tayong paproblemahin dito. Ito na yung, ano natin, ito na yung solution natin for this case. So, uh, I think we'll be starting with this, no? Alam naman natin na, di ba, ang general form would be uv minus vdu. Oops. Ito natin siya ilagay. So, we have uv minus the integral of vdu. Okay. So, for the first one, sabi natin dito, kapag meron tayong any variable na pwede natin siyang i-differentiate continuously and magzi-zero sila, so, we'll be selecting that function. And in this case, that is t. Okay. So, from this, we have u. So, gawin natin, gawin natin ng ganito. Hopefully, kasha yung ano na. So, we have u is equal to t. And then, du, of course, is dt. Okay. And then, we have dv that is equal to sine 2t dt. Therefore, yung ating dv would be equal to so, di, not, di ka siya pala no? imumove ko lang dito ng konti. So, for this, we have d, dv is equal to sine 2t dt and then yung ating v would be equal to. So, ito pag din, in, uh, in integrate natin, di ba makuha natin is uh, negative cosine of 2t and then divided by 2. Okay. So, di ba yan yan? Kasi that would be negative sign yung um, antiderivative tas may negative pa dito sa onohan so that becomes a positive sine 2t and then times 2. Okay, so we have uv that is t over 2. Okay, and then cosine 2t and then sabi natin minus the integral of v du. So that is the integral of v du. So that is um, 1 half or that becomes plus 1 half the integral of cosine 2t dt. Okay, so later on, saka natin to integrate Pag natapos natin yung the rest. So, from this naman, same, ano lang din, same procedure gagawin natin. So, u is equal to t, du is equal to dt, and then dv would be equal to sine uh, 4t dt. Therefore, yung ating v would be equal to um, negative cosine of 4t over 4. Okay? Therefore, yung ating expression would be uv that is a uh, negative t. Uh, by the way, I forgot to include yung negative natin dito. So, may negative dyan. Negative t cosine uh, 4t over 4. And then, plus vd. So, that is, kasi minus vd yun. Magiging plus na kasi may ano dito. May negative. 
that is cosine of 40 dt. Okay? And then finally, for the last term, we have u is equal to t, du is equal to dt. So, sa nakita nyo, no, kahit medyo malita yung sulat. And then, we have dv is equal to sine of 60 dt. And from this, yung ating v would be equal to negative cosine of 60. So, actually, pare-pares lang yung ginagawa natin pattern, no? Then, uv would be negative t cosine of 60 over 6. And then, plus the integral of uh, 1 over 6 cosine of 60 over, I mean, wala na over, dt. Okay? And finally, uh, our answer would be that if we were able to integrate yung mga last part nitong each of them, then uh, yun ay magiging final answer natin. So, from this, let's have um, negative t over 2 cosine of 2t plus, now the integral of cosine 2t would be uh, sine 2t over 2, so that becomes 1 fourth sine of 2t. Okay, so sana nag-guess nyo yung nangyari doon, no? Kasi that would be cosine of 2t in derivative dyan, and times, that's 1 half. Okay, and then minus um, t cosine of 4t divided by 4 and then plus, that becomes 1 over 16 sine of 40. And then finally, we have minus t cosine of 60 over 6. And then that is 1 over 36 sine of 60 plus c. Okay, so this is your um, final answer. And then before I forgot, kasi nakamultiply nga pala itong lahat na to sa 1 fourth. Kung mapapansin nyo dito sa ating expression and um, I wasn't able to include this in this ano, in this final answer. So, yung final answer natin would be um, 1 fourth tas multiply nitong lahat ng to. Okay. So, yun yung maging final answer natin. Okay. So, pag chinek nyo yun sa handout, that would also be uh, the same naman. Okay, so that's it for this item. And um, ginawa kasi dito sa handout niya is nilabas yung 36. So that is parang um, 36 at saka ano pa ba? Yung mga factor nung 6, 36, 4 and 16. So 5, 7, 6 kasing LCD nila eh. So yun, so parang 144 times 4, ganun. So, 144 times 4, so 5, 7, 6, that's why yung um, expanded form would be parang um, 1 over 8 for this, uh, 1 over 16, so ganun lang naman siya. But then again, it's just the same no, for this expression. So, let's check. For example, yung sine 2t. Yung sine 2t natin is, uh, that will be 1, 8, diba? And from this, diba, meron tayong 36 over 5, 7, 6, which is actually 1 over 16. 